Alright, Shalom, Shalom, the Brother Kadash. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Wadash. This is going to be called, you know, we going to find out. Something on that tip, we going to find out. Because what we going to find out? We going to find out who had the truth. We going to find out who had the lies, you know. When you put something on a brother, you got to be careful what you put on a brother. Because if it's not the truth, then that means that it's a lie. You see what I'm saying? So, this is the big thing that's going on right now with Israel. You know, everybody... It's going against each other. Everybody talking shit about each other, saying this person got the wrong doctrine. They against this person. They against that person. They standing up against this person, that person. But we gonna find out, you know. We gonna find out who the man of the Lord is. We gonna find out who's not. We gonna find out who the elect is. We gonna find out who's not, you know. So that's the great thing about the Lord is that we are going to find out the truth. You know what I mean? At some point in time, we gonna find out. You know, so everybody could have their feelings feel however they want to feel about the next guy. And I'm talking about, you know, with, in this thing of ours, you know, the Hebrew Israelites, the ones of us that claim to be in the truth and call ourselves the Hebrew Israelites, you know, um, there's going to come a point of time where the truth is going to be revealed. But see me, I don't think that that's going to condemn a brother. There's going to be something that's going to happen. Right. Because right now, ain't none of us perfect. We all wrong at something. We all right at something and we're all wrong at something. But there's going to be a point of time where there's going to be made a difference, right, between the men of the Lord and the men that are not, right? And that's where the test is going to come in. Some call it the MOTB. So we're going to see, you know, everything that you've been learning and the way that you've been moving, we're going to see if that gets you salvation or not. Same thing for me, you know. So the truth is going to prevail at the end of the day. You know, there's a lot of different doctrines and a lot of different um, reasons why people follow these doctrines. Now... Now, let's, I mean, let's go into that, right? So, let's go into that. So, let's jump into, straight into this precept, right? It's Ephesians 6, verse 5. So, this is something that gets brung up when you get to talking about order, right? And people say, well, we follow this order because we follow our elders and we follow what they say. That's cool, but you're not supposed to do that unless they're following the Lord. The moment they're not following the Lord, you don't have to follow them anything they do. I'll give you an example. If they put out something that goes against the Lord or adds to the to the truth or takes away from the truth, you don't have to follow that. You follow them as they are following the Lord. And some men get that mixed up, right? Because their truth is whatever their elders tell them to do. But they hypocritical because then they condemn other camps for following what they elders do. I see certain camps that uh, would condemn IUIC members and say they blindly following their leaders. How? I see IUIC leaders sit down almost daily and break down scriptures how's that blindly following oh no you think that they're blindly following their leaders because they believe something different than what you believe the breakdown is it ain't like they, their leaders are saying this is what it is and not breaking down anything or explaining why it's that way their leaders are going in the bible and saying look we believe the whole moon in the sky is the new moon because of genesis 1 they are actually going to the bible to explain their beliefs so you say that their leaders are blindly following them because you don't believe that it's that. You see how that's hypocritical? But then you blindly follow your leaders. So you say, okay, you can't be insubordinate. You got to follow your leaders, you know, because this is the man that the Lord set up over you, right? So you have to follow them no matter what. As, as if, just, just think about that. Just imagine if Apostle Paul, right, directly got taught by the Lord. Imagine if he said, Look, I can't follow what the Lord is telling me to do because I have to follow the order of these men that have been here and put in works be before me, the, the scribes and the Pharisees. I got to follow their order that they got set up so I can't follow what the Lord taught me. Just imagine that. So what does that prove? That proves that the Lord can directly come to a man and give him a revelation. And it can be the truth. He don't have to just be under a whole group of men. You know, so this, so, so that's what we going to find out. We going to find out if that's true or not. Right. Or if it's false, you know, yeah, you follow, do we have elders, right? With wisdom and knowledge? Yes. We follow them based off the wisdom and knowledge, as long as it matches up with the word of the Bible. The moment they're adding things outside of the Bible, that's the moment it becomes man pleasing. You see what I'm saying? And then the hypocritical stuff have to stop. You say, okay, I mean, come on, let's just get into Ephesians 6, you know. We're going to get to a couple more uh, precepts. Ephesians 6, verse 5. Let me get my phone together. Verse 5, right? It says, slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear. 
So they use this to say you have to obey the order and the leaders that's been set up above you. Why do I have to? I have to follow you, no matter what you say. Keep my mouth closed. Give you authority over me because another man said that you were the leader of the camp because you had to be appointed leader by somebody, right? So we so based off that, not based off the Lord. I gotta follow this order that's set up. Because you follow these mans and these elders. I heard a brother breaking that down. He said, people come to their camp. He tell them about the elders and give them backstory about the elders. No, you tell them about Yahweh Shai and give them a backstory on Yahweh Shai, man. That's man worshiping. We do this because of these men. No, it's supposed to be we do this because of the Lord. You see? So brothers may come down to your camp because you don't know what you're getting yourself into until you get there. You got to go there. Get there, see how things are, and then when things ain't right on certain points, you say, "Oh, let me get away from it." And then you might have to go, and but you don't give up on the truth. You still gotta go put in the work in, so you might have to go out there on your own and follow the Lord. But it's hypocritical to say that and say, "Well, brothers want to break off and do their own thing," and then condemn brothers for breaking off and doing their own thing, but you don't condemn your elders that did the exact same thing. Didn't they break off from their elders and go and do and make up and change the doctrine to different things? They not teaching the exact same doctrine that they elders were teaching. They broke off from them and changed up things. And then they said the excuse was they grew. But you don't condemn them, but you condemn brothers. See, that's where the whole authority and the problem with brothers misbreaking down Ephesians 6. Because people that you look up to, your elders, you ain't going to condemn them. Is it about the truth or is it about lies? But a brother that you look down to, you would condemn him for doing the same exact thing, breaking off and then changing up different parts of the doctrine based off his belief, which is the same exact thing your elders do. But you won't condemn your elders, but you condemn the brothers under you. That's where the authority. So that means that there's not a standard of truth. That means that you're respective of persons you're choosing. I'm choosing not to condemn this brother in my camp or I'm choosing not to condemn my elder because they're my they're my apostles of my camp and the leaders of my camp and and um or this a brother part of my camp. I'm choosing not to condemn him for doing the same act that I'm choosing to condemn a brother that I look at as being nothing or I'm above. I don't operate that way. It's the truth regardless. Slocky, we're gonna come back with a part two. Right, so you can't be a hypocrite. That's where the truth comes in at. The truth and a, and a lie. The difference between the truth and a lie is always, I mean, I ain't going to say always, but one of the very most important differences between a truth and a lie is hypocrisy, man. You can't be a hypocrite. You can't say, I got to follow my leaders, not be insubordinate, follow what they say, whether I agree or disagree, right? I got to do that, whether I agree or disagree, but then condemn another group, another condemn another group for following their leaders and not being insubordinate. That's that's being a hypocrite. Which one is it? You can't have it both ways. You can't say, hey, you can't break off and go do your own thing, start up your own thing and do your own way. But then your leaders that you look up to, that you're praising, that you're saying we have to follow, literally did that themselves too. You can't condemn Sakari for breaking off from GMS, going out there and starting Sakari. When GMS broke off from the camp that they were a part of and started GMS. You can't have it both ways or you're being a hypocrite and you're being a respectable of persons and you're being a man pleaser. So let's go into Ephesians chapter 6. I can get my phone to work. I had a little interruption, but that's okay. And this is simple. You know, this don't take a rocket science to understand if I'm telling the truth or not right now. If it's real or if it's fake. It's plain, simple examples, right? Now, Ephesians 6, verse 5. I'm reading this in the NIV just so it could break it down even more. Because these guys are slick, man, with the things they say. Right? So we have to, let's expose it. Verse 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear. So do we need to go into the definition of the word slave? I mean, let's, let's, go, let's go into the definition of the word slave. Because they use this to say brothers of the camp or brothers you have to follow the, the leadership of your camp no matter what, right? Slaves definition. A person who is forced to work for and obey another and is considered to be their property, an enslaved person. The leader at your camp, is you, you're not his property. You don't belong to the leader at your camp. Your soul belongs to Yahweh Shai. You belongs to Yahweh Shai, man. 
You belong to the Lord. You don't belong to the guy that's set up as a leader of your camp. It's a difference from being a leader of operations of the camp operations to being a leader over the men. This is the problem I had in the back in, back in the day when I went to a, a camp. It's a difference from overstepping boundaries. It's a difference from your leader being a spiritual leader and you look up to him because he's an elder and apostles and he's and he's guiding you to follow in the Lord to he's guiding you to fear him like he said or follow him. There's two different it's two different things, man. It's a difference from hey, do what I say compared to hey, you better do what the Lord says. So we are not property of the guy at your camp. That's the head of the camp. You're property of Yahweh Shai, man. You're not enslaved to him. You don't owe him a debt. You're not being forced to work under him. Brothers are supposed to come together and work together. You see, so that's already a cut right there, but let's keep going, right? So slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you will obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor, when their eyes is on you, but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from your heart, serve wholeheartedly. So it's just being a slave. Come on, man. So go down and ask these guys at these camps, say, are you a slave to this guy that's the leader? Are you, do you look up? Is he your master or are you his slave? And, and watch their face turn all different type of colors and all the excuses come out. Lord, so if a guy at your camp that's the leader, he's bringing out this precept to talk about other brothers and say they have to be in order. This is how he look at you guys. This is how he look at his brother at his camp. He look at them as slaves under him because he's the leader of the camp, right? Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. We are free in Yahweh Shai. So how, so how does this make any sense to leadership or order at a camp? And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them. So if you threaten your slave, you say, I'm going to kick you out the camp. Isn't that threatened? It says, do not threaten them. <laughs> Since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. There's no favoritism, no respect of, with the Lord, but your favoritism towards your elders compared to like a brother that just comes off, off the streets that you don't know. You showing favoritism, man, because you're not holding the same standard. So now let's go back. I wanted to get that in the NIV. But of course, we get everything in the um, KGV over here. I do. I choose to. Not saying that brothers have to. So I want to get it in the KGV too. Ephesians 6, we just breaking it down because this is a precept that's always used, right? So we just breaking it down. My phone loads, right? So Ephesians 6, verse 5, and this is the KGV now. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service, or as man pleasers. So let's break down that man pleasers, right? Let's break down that. I'll just finish the verse. But as a servant of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. So you follow, you could, you could follow your leaders. They're really, you follow their wisdom. You don't follow them. You follow the Lord. You follow the wisdom and the knowledge that the Lord gave them as long as it comes from the Lord. If it goes, if it adds, if it takes away from the truth, you don't follow that, man. Um, let's go. Um, man pleasers. Let's get the definition of man pleasers. It's just very simple, man. You just got to look up the definition of it. Man pleaser definition. Right? Let's see what comes up. One who pleases man or who strives to gain their favor. So this says not as man pleasers. So a lot of these guys are guilty of being man pleasers because they strive in just to gain favor of the leader of their camp or the brothers at the camp or the leader of the whole camp, the apostles, the top of the camp. You strive in to gain favor. You got to gain favor of Yahweh Shai, man, not of men. That becomes a man pleaser. So let's go more into what man pleaser is, right? So if an elder of mine, I respect, says, hey, you got to keep the Sabbath day and I follow it. That's not a man pleaser. I'm following the Lord because he's saying that because that's what the Lord says. If an elder of mine say, hey, you can't get on video with another brother that lives in California. Y'all part of the same camp. Y'all can't get on video and do videos together. That's adding to the word. The Lord never said you could do that. So what if this, the Lord is putting the spirit on you to do that with that brother? That's how the Lord. Don't we say the Lord used the Internet? He created the Internet to spread the truth. So what if the Lord is using the internet so you and this brother in California, I live in Illinois, me and this brother 
I'm for Illinois his brother in California so we can connect and do some work together. What if the Lord wants us to come together and do some work to do it? And the only way we could do it is through the internet doing a video together. But I'm not going to follow what the Spirit's telling me. I'm going to follow what this man is telling me, even though it's not a sin for us to do what we're doing. That is man pleasing now. That's when you're stepping over boundaries and becoming a man pleaser. So, I mean, you just got to go into the words. Let's get another one. Because I hear man say this, your spiritual fathers. No, the man at your camp, the leaders at your camp are not your spiritual father. You have a biological father. We know that King David was the biological father of King Solomon. King Solomon could call David my father. Then when you go to the spiritual side, you call your, okay, so of course you call your biological father, your father. When it goes to the spiritual side, you have one father that's the father in heaven. That's who you call your father. Not the guy that's at your camp leading the camp, man. He's a big brother, which is still a great thing, man. But when you call him your father, then you could go to the priest up and say, hey, honor your father and your mother. When it says honor your father and your mother, it's only, look, I have to say the word only. I have to say the word only. Do I have to get the definition of the word only? It's only talking about your, it, when it says honor your father and your mother in the, in, in the law, that's saying honor your biological father and your mother. And if you want to take it spiritually, you only can say it's talking about the Lord. Um, if it says your father, then you can say the Lord. And then if it says honor your mother and you want to take that spiritual, then we know um, you can say wisdom. Wisdom is a feminine spirit. You see what I'm saying? You want to honor wisdom because that wisdom comes from the Lord. You want to honor the Lord. But in a physical sense, it's talking about your biological father and mother, not a guy that you're saying is your father because he's the leader of your camp. But let's get this right here. This is Matthew 23, verse 8. Let's see what the scriptures say and let's see if we agree or not. Or this, see, this is how you break down the truth. Let's see who got the truth or not. But be not called rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and, ye, and all ye are brethren. So it's saying don't call yourself master. Don't call yourself rabbi. Now, brothers are slick. They use different words. They say spiritual father. They say um, leader and stuff like that. But the same thing as saying master. It's saying for one is your master. So it's saying it's telling us not to be called rabbi or master. So you can't go to Ephesians 6 and say, hey, slaves or servants, honor your masters. Because the Bible is telling us not to be called master. So they can't be talking about us. It can't be uh, talking about us at the local camp setting ourselves up as masters. Because the Bible is telling us don't be called master. So you can't use that same uh, precept of Ephesians 6 and say, slaves, honor your masters and say, that means that you have to honor me because I'm the leader of the camp. Because Matthew 23 is saying, don't be called master. You see how it works, man? You see how it works? That's a major cut. <laughs> and um, where it says, uh, not as man pleasers, that's a major cut too in Ephesians 6. So brothers be pulling that scripture in Ephesians 6 and they be cutting themselves. And then they get all quiet and then they try to go and really explain it when it gets to that part as not as man pleasers. That means that, you know, you can't, if a brother tell you to do something, you don't really like it or you don't really want to do it in your heart, but you, but you still do it. You got to really still do it and really want to do it. But then they say at the same time, if you don't agree with something, you can't be insubordinate. You still have to follow the leadership. So which one is it? So if you don't agree with it, right, and the Lord put the spirit on you, I agree with it, do you still do it or not if he commands you to do something, the leader at the camp? Because if you say, yeah, then then that cuts your definition or your breakdown of Ephesians 6 where it don't do it out of, like, you don't really agree with it in your heart, but you still doing it. Don't do it because then that makes you a man pleaser. Okay, so if you say no, then you don't do it, then that cuts your thing that you have to follow your leader's. You see what I'm saying? No matter what, because that's what you're saying. So if a brother say, look, I don't agree with this, and he and he and the spirit takes him away from these leaders or this camp, how can you condemn him? Because you telling him not to do something where he don't agree, but just do it as a man, please. You telling him not to do that. You see, so I mean it's it's a lot of confusion. Okay, so but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. It says all ye are brethren. So our elders and our apostles will be our big brethren. Okay, so Matthew's 23 again, because we have to, you know, go through this stuff slowly, bro, because there's a lot of lies 
and there's a and there is truth though there is truth out there so the truth got to prevail matthew 23 verse 8 but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all ye are brethren so we are all brothers if we got elders they are like if they're spiritual anything they would be like spiritual big brothers it says and call no man your father upon the earth what does that mean so do we just disregard this and say, well, they're still, we still going to call him our father? Then you're not following the Lord because the Lord comes in the volume of the book. The word. You see, so when you says, when it says, call no man your father upon earth, what is it talking about? Is that, does that mean that King Solomon can't call King David his father? No. It's saying you call your biological father your father, but other than that, call no man your father on earth. And then it tells you why. For one is your father, which is in heaven. So that's the lens we look at it as. You, we are all brethren, and we have a father that's in heaven. That's how it is. It says, neither be ye called masters. So you can't use Ephesians 6 to say, servants, follow your master, and say, well, I'm the master because I'm the leader of the camp. So you have to follow me because Ephesians 6 says, set servants, follow your master. Because Matthew 23 is telling you, neither be called masters. <laughs> you see? Very simple. For one is your master. So who's our master? Even Christ. That's our master. Right? And then it even goes on to say, but he that is greatest among you should be your servant. So the leader at the camp, he's supposed to be a servant to the camp. He's supposed to be doing all everything he can to help the camp and support the brothers. Not, oh, I'm the top guy. I got all the authority over y'all. Y'all have to say and do what I say. Don't be insubordinate against me and this and that. That's not how this thing worked, man. Yahweh Shai came. He was doing works, laboring for the sinners. He didn't come in that pride spirit. I'm um, over all you. They, they had to say, hey, you the king of the Jews. And he said, um, roughly paraphrasing, um, they say it so. Yeah, they, yeah, they say it so. They had to put that label on him. He ain't coming like, even though we know he is, but he ain't come like, man, I'm the leader. I'm over all y'all. Y'all got to get down right now. Get down or lay down. And if you don't lay, if you don't get down with this, you done. He ain't coming that spirit, man. He came in a humble spirit. He was working for the people to help the people. He was putting himself to the side to help the people. These guys ain't in that spirit, man. Yeah, what y'all, the order that you see these guys running is the, it's, it's based off the mafia. The order of the mafia, and we seen what happened to them. Costa Nostra, all that shit was a fool, and it came to an end. They roamed for a long time, so just because you in it for a long time don't mean nothing. And that shit came to an end. Because it wasn't really no real loyalty. It wasn't really no real standard. They bend the rules for people that, man pleasers. You had a lot of man pleasers in the mafias, and they bend the rules. It would, they didn't follow the standard, man. It's the same thing. You got, now let me, it's been a while, so let me walk this through. You got your boss. You got your underboss. Now, they just don't say boss. They say apostles. Then you got your up-and-coming apostles or up-and-coming elders. It's the same thing. It's the same order that the mafia set up. That's it. You follow a man that's from New York that lived during the time the mafia was the most dominant and that learned the order in the ways of the mafia, and now they're applying that to camp. That's it. So just because you say, oh, you got to follow order, that don't mean that your order is the order of the Lord. The order of the Lord is very simple. Here it go. The law, statutes, and commandments. That's the order of the Lord. When you deal with another brother, deal with him based off these law, statutes, and commandments. Nothing more, nothing less, right? So that, that's all they're doing is following the mafia. You got bosses, under bosses, um, concierge, and then you got um, capo, captain, and then you have soldiers underneath him, and then you have associates. That's no different than saying you got apostles, you got elders, you got regional leaders, then you got leader of the camp, then you got camp members, and then you got associates, which is people that's trying to get into the camp. See, See how very similar it is? I figured it out. That easy. You see how very similar it is? So you so you just building your camp based off the order of the mafia and you don't even know where that order is coming from, but you saying it come from the Lord. It don't come from the Lord, it's coming from the mafia, man. The order of the Lord is simple. The law, statutes, and commandments. Don't steal from him, don't kill from him, don't hate him. Honor your mother and father, keep the Sabbath day, on and on and on and on and on. That's the order of the Lord, man. Now, let's end this with this, because a lot of men are gonna be guilty of this. They're already guilty of being man pleasers and um 
choosing to follow man over the Lord, even though they think they don't. See, that's the that's the that's why you gotta fear the Lord, because you could be guilty of something that you don't necessarily think that you're guilty of, but you are guilty of it, according to the Lord. But you in your heart, you may think that you're not. That's why you have to fear the Lord, man. And that's what make the Lord so 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 um the where you have to be so fearful of the Lord. Because you don't your thoughts are not the, the Lord's thoughts, man. Um, let's go. Here. Revelations 22, which I, I love this one, you know, because a lot of guys say you got to stand for this, stand for that. But what does this say? Verse 11, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Just let him be unjust, man. Now, every now and then we make these videos, you know, to bring out the truth because we ain't going to conceal the truth either. It tells you that in Psalms 40. But him that is unjust, that's why I said we going to see. We going to find out, you know. It says, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Don't try to stop the righteous from being righteous, man. Because you hating off of him. Let him do his thing and be righteous. It says, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to, as, his, as his work shall be. And none, ain't none of us perfect, but your, your sins and your good deeds are going to be weighed in the balance. Your works. It's going to be weighed in the balance, and you want your good works to outweigh your bad works. So you can't condemn a brother based off his bad works because his good works may outweigh. That's why I like the apostles of the camp. I, I love them. I still think they're men of the Lord. Do I think they're going off in places? Yes. Do I think they're wrong in places? Yes. But I think they good works outweigh their bads. So they're going to be forgiven of those things. If you talk about the elders, which is really none of my business, but um, um one of the elders that passed away that um, was very known, a lot of brothers was getting on him saying he was wicked, but you don't know. You got to wait till he's weighed, weighed in the ball. Says, yeah, did he do a lot of wicked stuff? Yes. But do his good deeds outweigh his bad deeds? We got to see. But, you know, brothers make points on some of the precepts they, they pull and I get on that. Right? Um. Here, this is what I want to do. Verse 18, for I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God should add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So you got to be careful when breaking down Ephesians 6 because you could be guilty of adding um, of adding to it, man. Because you're putting a twist on it. When it, when Matthew 20, 23 cuts your understanding of Ephesians 6, man. Right? But um, if you add into it and it's not just the book. It's the word, and the word is what? The truth. So it's the same as saying adding to the truth or adding to the word or adding to the book. Same thing, right? So you, you got to be careful with adding to the truth, man. So this is where you become a man pleaser. Hey, you got to fear me if you do this, but it's not according to what a sin is. It's according to just what my feelings is about it. That's adding to it. If any man should take away from the word of this of the book of this prophecy, God should take away his part of the book of life and all of his holy city and from the things which are written in the book. You could be out on the highways and byways for 50, 60 years. That don't mean that you're going to be a man of the Lord, man. And that's where you have to fear the Lord at. And that's where you have to humble yourself and watch him off. Because it's very it's a very scary thing, man. This man that being the truth 80 years don't mean that they're going to be a man of the Lord. So we can't just go off time. And say, well, he's been doing this for this amount of time. We got to go off. Is he going off? Does say Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh side? Does say the Bible? Does say the word? Or is he putting things of his own heart in there? You know, you can't condemn a brother for not agreeing with you. Brothers are not going to agree with each other on different things. The pro the, the part is, is, is he sinning? So if a brother puts a GMS on his um title um on YouTube, that's not a sin, so you can't condemn him. You can feel however you want to feel, but you can't condemn him because that's not a sin. But when you try to condemn him still, now you're condemning him off laws, man, 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 being a man pleasers and um commandments of man. And then now you're in the fault. You're going wrong. So you got to be very careful. With that, I'm going to say salvation to the elect. Shalom.